Well, first news this morning's Lauren Wood has reports tonight looking into development around the valley. Lauren spoke with education, business, and nonprofit leaders from our area to find out why they make decisions to either renovate an old building or start over with something new. She joins us in the studio with what she found out. The list of factors that come into play for a decision like this is longer than you might think. Renovations can be wonderful, but they have the tendency to turn up unexpected costs. Building new comes with its own set of challenges, including where to do it and what to do with the old building. We start our look at these development decisions with schools. I had the chance to visit one that's in the process of a big overhaul and another that's just settling into a brand new campus. Cardinal Mooney High School is in the process of a major facelift. Be operating a brand new building today for a fraction of the cost to build a brand new building. This summer will be the last phase of a big renovation paid by alumni Ed DeBartlow and Denise DeBartlow York. It wasn't for the Mooney alumni paying us back, we wouldn't be doing this. Arriving at the decision to renovate was a long process. The school and the diocese looked at the pros and cons of moving out of Youngstown and building new or making big improvements to their south side campus. Back in 2013, Bishop George Murray told First News asbestos was making them think twice about renovating. Those uh, particular uh, problems are, I think, significant. And as a result, I decided to step back from the original decision and reconsider it. Ultimately, they say renovating was the best option. It was a big undertaking, especially with the asbestos, but one they're glad they did. We decided to take it all out rather than take it in bits and pieces because we get it done. I mean, even the tile, yeah. you have to take that out. It's asbestos tile. We take it out, do it right. Private schools like Mooney don't have the option of state dollars. That funding is what makes it possible for so many public districts to build new campuses like Hubbard. It's been a great learning experience. Um, I mean, to, to take students and staff from a building built in the 1920s um, and to bring them into a new facility that's state of the art. The process of building new schools in Hubbard started about 10 years ago. No, now the elementary, middle, and high school are all under one roof, but in separate buildings. We could not have this if it wasn't for our community. I mean, our community has been very, very supportive of our schools. It has been attractive to, to build because renovating costs just as much. But not all public districts are able to get enough money from the state to make that possible. Boardman is still in the state's eyes viewed as a wealthy school district, even though 50% of their kids are on free and reduced lunch now. That's because of how many businesses are in the district. Shavoni says the state will only put in 14% for new school buildings in Boardman local taxpayers would have to cover the next 86%. That'll never pass. Not all renovations are equal. Some involve special requirements, making them qualify as historic. That can help fund the project, but it can also make for some added headaches. Coming up in the next half hour, I'll show you what I learned about those challenges and the benefits. In the studio, I'm Lauren Wood, WKBN 27 First News. And we have a special section for this story at WKBN.com where you can see a tour of the renovations at Cardinal Mooney and Hubbard's new campus.